So search incrementality. How paid search and organic combined over deliver. This is the infamous uh, search inc incrementality theory of one plus one equals three. Later on, I'll show you the math doesn't actually equal three, but that's just a prettier number than 1.02. You guys can laugh at any point, <laughs> and this will be interactive. Feel free to just scream at me. So who is this weird person? So I did write this original presentation, assuming I was gonna still be in the hospital and wouldn't be coming in, so I forgot to update a lot of this out along the way. So it's gonna be spoken as if I was a video recording. Next part, who do I work for? Who was crazy enough not to prove my presentation and let me come out here? Uh, needless to say, they're nowhere near here to prevent me from going forward. Um, after we get through that fluff, we're gonna talk about when people tell me that they can pause paid search and just live off their organic rankings, my belief system to that one. Uh, sweet, it does work. Uh, I'll tell you right now, it's not good. The theory, the search theory of one plus one equals three, you're gonna sit there and say, John, you should not be an accountant, you shouldn't probably be doing math, you probably shouldn't just do numbers in general. And I agree with all that. But this will make more sense as time goes on. Uh, evidence of the theory in motion itself, understanding how to test and measure it on your own, and the takeaway. So a quick poll before we go into this deeper. How many here run SEO? Very few, that's shocking. How many of you all run paid search or SEM? Okay, there's a whole bunch of people here that don't seem to do either, and I'm not really sure why you're here in general. I'll be perfectly honest, it's kind of confusing. All right, how many are agency side? Fewer than I thought. How many are brand side? Okay, all right. So this will be, agencies typically already know this. You guys can, I, I don't know, look at memes during this presentation for all I care. <laughs> brand side, this is always important for you all to um, kind of understand this theory. And everyone else seems like you just came for a free lunch, but that's fine. So quick, the fluff. This is the part where I'm required to tell you who I am. I'm not a ex-con. I'm not here to embezzle all your money, stuff like that. So I've been doing this for about 17 years, which means I have no other discernible skill set in life other than search marketing and a little bit of digital media. 16 of my 17 years in the space, I've worked on the agency side. I've been with some of the smallest you've know, never heard of, some of the biggest I did time with Digitas and the Publicis family, um, Mediacom, the WPP family. Last uh, almost nine years, I've been with a company that's now called Nine Rooftops. Prior to us being called Nine Rooftops, which was as of June 2020, we merged with two other agencies. I was with a company called Mark USA, um, and they decided, let's take our company, merge with others, and we have nine offices, and we're all working in our offices. It's a great time to rebrand ourselves to Nine Rooftops. That plan was put in motion on March 1st of 2020. So now we theoretically have 250 offices, or 250 rooftops. But uh, yeah. So... I don't have to tell you I'm God's gift to search. I, you don't have to listen to me, you don't have to believe it. But I got a lot of uh, fun little things here. Oh, this is not the right button. I got a lot of few things here that say that I know what I'm, um, once again, not God's gift to it all, but I've been around the block. I've been uh, the very first recipient in the world of the Cert Google Search Excellence Award. No, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, been the Bing Awards, that I refuse to call it Microsoft. Uh, twice finalist, three times for OMA finalist. Uh, we won it once, I think. I've been named uh, one of the top 25 influencers in search marketing for the past three years. Although my team notes that my rank each year goes further and further down, so which means this year I won't be ranked. Uh, all that cute jazz. Um, I, I know what I'm doing. So then the next question is, why am I here? Well, I normally work remotely. I've been home for two years. This is actually my first conference to speak at since February of 2020 in person. Uh, good for you all for coming out. Enjoy it. Um, and my dog kept throwing up on the carpet and I didn't want to keep cleaning it and it was his way of telling me to leave. So some other fun facts before I dive into this and take up the last little bits of the fluff here. Uh, before this, I was a firefighter. I uh, did it to help get through college. It was a fun thing that I was gonna be in the FDNY. Then I stopped and realized starting salary was $28,000. Think about that. Um, I'm a devout fan of the New York Jets. Yeah, that made it worse. <laughs> okay then. Yes, they're terrible. Real 
a huge fan of Real Housewives Atlanta. Number one is Atlanta. Number two is now Salt Lake City. Anyone that disagrees with me, I will fight you. Um, and I have a small flock of chickens. For legal reasons in the state of Connecticut, it is called a micro flock to avoid tax purposes, for various tax reasons. Um, I, they're adorable. You'll see them throughout this presentation. And if you want to see them on Instagram, CT Chicken Dad is my handle. Not trying to starve for followers here, but I am trying to become a chicken fluencer. <laughs> All right. That's Daisy. Uh, that's not a look of admiration. She just pooped on me in that photo. And then she bit me. So more about the company, because they told me I have to say it while I'm here. We've got technically nine offices um, around the country. I report into our Boston office, ironically not our New York office, even though I live closer to the New York office. Anybody here from Connecticut, by the way? What part? Stanford. Stanford. Stanford? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk afterwards. Yeah, all right, yeah. Um, everybody here from New York, I assume? I only see like three people saying yes. Where did you all come from? What? Okay, more power to you. Um, we are a full service agency, which means we do di um, online, offline production, um, print, linear, yada, yada. You all can read that. You have, well, I believe everyone here has two eyes and can see. Um, I work in what's Cognition Media, which is the media buying strategy and execution division. Uh, we just spun off the name for reasons I don't really truly know. Um, except to sound different and found the most complicated name possible to buy a domain for. Go senior management. So, to show you that we do work with some real names, you all probably recognize some of this Alcasan, which um, Pennsylvania, Bell Tire, Midwest, Belltone, Hearing Aid, BSN, Optutrition, if you're in sports, um, pre workout protein shakes, Qdoba burritos. Everybody here likes Qdoba? Good answer. Hear that, Qdoba? There's a the camera. We have people that like you. And in the metro New York area, and you all will go by afterwards, please. Uh, Gelmar, which is CLR, McLean. This is about a dozen, two dozen of our about 75 clients okay, from around the world. Okay. Okay. So now let's get into the nitty gritty. It's where you start paying attention. Um, I was told not to go that way. Um, when people tell me that they can pause SEM, which is just paid search for those who don't know, and they can survive with just the organic listings. They're gonna be just fine. You know, I don't need to pay for my brand name. I don't need to be there because my organic rankings and the SEO work is phenomenal. This is how it nets out. <laughs> Come on, it's law. Yes, that is a chicken costume. That was at my daughter's um, oh. Halloween parade. She didn't know I was coming in costume. She was not pleased. I have not been allowed to wear that outfit since. And yes, it was a onesie. But no, go ahead. So ask me if you can do it. And this is going to be the response without the chicken suit. No, I, once again, this is the hill I will die on right now. No holistic or logical paid search program or holistic search program should survive solely on one entity of paid search and paid social, unless there's a direct monetary strain or your name is eBay. That's, the uh, reason I say eBay is eBay is the only program to have ever done it successfully. Um, outside of that, anybody here from eBay? Yeah, I didn't think so. So the answer is still remains no. Well, that reminds me, um, while I'm up here, please take several action photos of me going like this, this. I have to justify my expense report and they always require a photo. So when people tell me, I tell them, no, absolutely not. I get asked this about four times a year on average from my 20 or so clients or from these conferences. I usually do about uh, 10 conferences a year. I always get this question at least four times a year. Um, like I said, only once in my career has this ever been proven to be um, capable without a force of, source of loss, and that was with eBay. There are a few other brands out there that could pull it off, but I will note that they all have larger marketing budgets that typically do TV, linear, connects TV that drive down funnel to you all, or to the organic search, so that's how they offset it. But that also makes sure that your SEO is on point. So after we talk, and I say just really rude, inappropriate things, a lot of questioning their competence, their logic, um, why they're here, usually challenge them to a fist fight or something, um, I provide them with this logic. 
of the concept of one plus one equals three. There's no formal name to the theory. I've been calling it the search incrementality theory solely because I needed a title. And um, if you don't use the word search in front of incrementality theory, apparently it means something completely different. I discovered and got in trouble with the University of Pennsylvania for patent that theory. Um, after completing my expl explanation of this, about 90% of the people back off and don't question it. 5% uh, typically want to go forward with the test, and 5% no longer speak to me, which I call a win in the long run. I'm, I'm really throwing out some good jokes here. I'm, I'm trying. So the presence of search ads or SEM ads um, is vital to the support of a unit for organic rankings. Think of organic um, and SEM together as your child's Halloween candy. Everybody here, anyone here have kids? Do they have Halloween candy? Did they have Halloween candy? Okay, all right, so obviously you go and take the parent tax where you say, all right, this is all mine. Here's your smarty and your bit of honey, go don't chip a tooth kind of thing. So that's how it goes down in my house. So when I go looking through my kids' Halloween candy for the taxation, I like to think of it as SEM and SEO together. Um, basically because when I first wrote my original presentation, it was Halloween night. So when I go looking for it, I look for my favorite milk chocolate covered treats, but I'm also a little less discerning because it's usually one o'clock in the morning, I've had a few beverages in me, I'll eat anything that's chocolate. So I just go start looking for something more generic. So envision this as the organic rankings. We have five delicious chocolate treats here, nothing one specific. Yeah, two of them have caramel, one has peanut butter, one's mint, and one of them is a Kit Kat with a fun name. But there's nothing here that's compelling me to one way or another. So let's imagine now that we've added in paid search to go in conjunction with our SEO rankings or SEO listings. So what I've tried to simulate here is the four off to the right are your PLAs, Google Shopping ads, the one, additional ones down at the bottom is another paid search ad. So when you look at this, and you start thinking about it, and I had no discerning focus on a single piece of candy. What brand of candy, after looking at this, do you think I'm more likely to go after? Bingo, bingo. Not just because it's a far superior candy than Junior Mint, but that is why. You start doing this increased degree of visibility, increased con concept of consumer trust, because they start seeing, all right, I've searched for chocolate but I see a Reese's ad, but I also see the Reese's organic listing. That has proven time and time again to drive incremental traffic when the two of them are present together. So when you look at it going prior, you have a limited options. Everyone has about a 20% chance here. Here, the chances now work more in your favor because you have a higher degree of visibility. This is not gonna drive extra searches. This is gonna drive extra traffic to the site. So now we're gonna get into the one plus one equals three theory. And when I start to think about it, I started thinking about all the group people that have thought about this over the years who have co come to us and presented us with this type of logic through various styles and traits, through various methodologies, not all that I agree with. Um, some do it in formal case studies on, as a PhD program. Uh, and then we do it this way. When I think about search marketing geniuses, I believe I speak for everyone in this room that after Khalees with Milkshake, it is obviously Cardi B with her description in the song Bodak Yellow, so don't get comfortable. Look, I don't dance now. I make money moves. This right here, I see at least one head nodding, um, is the concept of the one plus one equals three of search incrementality theory, and we're gonna break it down for you. Yeah, no one uh, reviewed my presentation in advance. I was not prepared for this to be live stream. HR will have a conversation with me when I get back. Oh well. So let's go back through this statement. So don't get comfortable. Look, I don't dance now. I make money moves. And it broke. It was a good run. So what does Cardi B really mean in this scenario? What we first believe is the first part. So don't get comfortable. Website traffic is largely a split between paid and organic. And this often leads to a heavy reliance on organic traffic. Organic should typically make up between 30 and 70% of your traffic. Um, after that, it's gonna be a fight between paid media and direct to site. Um, but we always get this heavy reliance on organic and you start looking at it side by side, like, you know what, I could probably just go into it and go organic only. And think of this, but um, basically what you're saying is, which often leads to the over-reliance of organic in search engines, think of it can pick up, thinking that organic will eventually be able to pick up all the opportunity as your rankings go up and up and up. Look, I don't dance now. 
A savvy marketer should be testing out A-B scenarios of the presence of SEO and SEM in two separate A-B tests, both on brand and on non-brand. Take your pick on how you want to do it. With the assistance of a Google Search Console. Everybody here have a Google Search Console on their website? Okay, I've seen like... If you don't have a Google Search Console on your site, it's free, please put it on your website. It is a basic logical thing. I was not prepared for such few yeses. <laughs> <sighs> Gotta keep the blood pressure down, okay. Um, Search Console is vital for anything. If you have any form of organic traffic or you had to do any type of SEO or organic content, Search Console is a great way to see if it's showing for your um, rankings, all that. I make money moves. This is where Cardi was saying, I recognize that running a strong SEO effort in conjunction with SEM is vital to prove that when we operate together, we can provide incremental opportunity and create a sense of demand. Now, when I say sense of demand, I don't mean the actual search of demand in the search volume. I mean the demand going to your site because you have a higher visible presence in the search. Make sense so far? Good? I believe we're all in alignment that that's what Cardi B was saying? Perfect. So. Yes, she was right. Despite some of her other more recent behavior that we won't get into or address, in this scenario, she was right. SEO by itself provides one. SEM by itself provides one. I have seen websites that have absolutely no organic rankings whatsoever. You could punch in their exact name and .com into the um, a Safari browser, not into Chrome, but into some of the other browsers, and you still won't see their um, show up in the server. But, they'll go ahead and run paid search. It's very common in telecom, it used to be common in pharmaceutical, where they would do multiple uh, double serving scenarios to try and do organic rank. But when we see them together, it doesn't provide us two, it provides us more than that. Having both an organic present at the same time in the SERP provides a greater sense of visibility for the brand, creating a higher opportunity of a CTR. Remember, CTR does not have to be just paid ads, it can be Anything, any inbound traffic to your site is theoretically a CTR scenario. Everybody here know what CTR is? Okay, no one over here is saying yes or nodding. Over here, we're good. Okay, okay, got one. It's recommended to test this on your own, but be sure to preset measurement expectations. The reality is I will never advocate for you to turn off paid media specifically paid search and run just holistic search. But I also know that about three to four times a year, you're gonna question it. And you're gonna say, you know what, can I do it without it? If you're gonna do it, go ahead and run this test. You'll come back and eventually see that I'm right, or at least Cardi B was. Um, but if you're gonna do it, do it right and make sure you have measurements in place. No, this isn't the end of the deck, I just poorly worded my layout on this. And there are a few brands that have pulled it off, as I mentioned earlier, we've seen Amazon, and eBay pull it off in my career. Uh, there was a good Harvard business study in 2015 or 2016, and it actually one back in 2013, showing the brands that have been successfully been able to do it. I assume no one here works for Amazon. The other, only other one that's well known is Geico. And what we have noted in every scenario where it's worked out successfully is there was a massive TV, linear TV, uh, CTV um, investment to make those happen. Um, once again, I'm gonna make some assumptions here, call me rude or not. I don't think any of y'all have that kind of money to work with. Once again, not meant to offend, but I did. So, this is where we turn to Creed. And Creed says what we're all thinking. This is a matter of survival. This is how we get as much traffic to our site as possible, despite what it is. And I can't stress this enough, this is more important on non-brand traffic than it is on brand traffic. If someone is searching for your name, if someone is searching for John Kagan, well, you're not gonna find anything about me, good at least. But if someone is searching for John Kagan and my organic ranking is there, that's fine, we're good. But if someone is searching for giant ginger who speaks and I, my ad is not there, I can guarantee you I'm not gonna rank organically. Um, I'm less likely to get that traffic to the site. It's all about survival. So let's go talk about this theory in depth with less um, animation, not nearly as fun, but I was told to make it this way so that people will understand and not hate me later. Full transparency, I am not the original author of this study. Um, honestly, I've tracked, tr tried, this theory has been around for as long as I've been in the industry, which is 17 years now. Um, 
I've never been able to find the origination. I've been able to find documentation on it. The first documentation I was able to find was done by um, Melissa Mackey. Uh, she's the CEO of another agency. I can't, unfortunately, I can't remember which agency it is at the moment. She wrote an article back in DM News about it in 2009. Uh, when you guys get the presentation, there's a citation at the bottom. The most compre not comprehensive, the most in-depth study I've ever found was done by NYU grad students, uh, Sha Yang and uh, Anindya, Anindya Ghos. Um, they actually did it for their PhD, pro um, or, or I think it was for their PhD program at the time. Um, if anyone enjoys complicated math equations and is open to reading 65 pages of text about yay big, and then sitting there and questioning it, go for it. It's a fascinating read. Um, but that is the most well-documented -doc version of this theory that's ever existed so far within our industry. Uh, highly recommend it. If nothing else, to go up to your boss and say, when they say, I don't want to run uh, paid ads, you take, print out all 65 pages and throw it and say, go here, read this. Well, that was a gem. Three laughs. All right. So the theory is seemingly illogical as it follows. Assume organic. Um, Operating by itself without SEM will drive you 100 visitors. Now then assume that you have zero organic ranking, which is not common, but it does happen, especially if you enter a no-follow tag onto your website, and you're only running SEM and it gets you 100 visitors. Now you operate them together. Theoret theoretically, if they're running at the same time, you would only get 100 visitors total. Someone would be picked up by paid search, someone would be picked up by organic. But because you have a degree of increased visibility, you actually see a higher CTR coming through in an aggregate level. So numerous studies have shown, yada, yada, yada. Everybody here can read that up on there, so I don't need to do it. Hence the concept of one plus one equals three. Essentially, when they're both there, you see a degree of incrementality, because I keep saying that time and time again. So who wants to see me actually prove this theory out? Okay, that's actually the most hand raises we've gotten so far. So that means y'all really want me off stage or want to actually see evidence. That's great. So I have three different clients we've done this on. Um, this client is, whose name I can't say out loud, but their primary business is selling smoked meat online. Number one is bacon. Uh, for those who choose to consume the swine, which is absolutely delicious in my mind, since the good Jew up here. Um, it is one of the premier op things you can do. And we actually did this one solely by accident. Um, and I'll get into why. So large consumable D2C operator, um, they're literally selling bacon online. They also sell ham, we want to diversify a little bit. Um, via DTC Ecom capability on their website, we've been running paid search for them at this point for about a year coming, having taken it from a prior agency. <sighs> What was interesting is they had the search account for about 10 years. They've been running on the same credit card for roughly 10 years. Um, whoever owned the credit card went and did some shopping on a shady website and the phone credit card number got stolen. Thank you, American Express, for your great security system. No one told us. No one told the person with the credit card, so therefore no one thought to tell us. So Google, so when Google went to charge their card, uh, it said, it can't charge it, we're gonna suspend your search operations. Now, because this client apparently, I don't know, was Amish or something, um, wasn't able to get a credit card for a number of days, um, which I still, to this degree, or day, don't understand why it took us five to six days to get a new card. So, because of that, we weren't able to run paid search simultaneously. So, we said, all right, let's make a case study out of it and see what happens. So, up until this point, um, next part. For those of you who are, can squint easily enough, basically Google paid search and Google organic up until this point are each contributing roughly 23% of site traffic on each of their independent channels. Um, and combined, they're about 35% of total sales for the time period, which is about six days pre, post, and during. So when the SEM turned off, the combined efforts fell on the shoulders of solely organic. Now they have good organic. And if you search their brand name, they're number one, two, three, actually they're number one through 13. Uh, it's pretty phenomenal that one. The non-brand side, who can guess what their rank is for non-brand listing on organic? Who can guess? Please, for love of God, someone guess. Exactly. Page three. Yeah. 
their website is a bit antiquated, they weren't up to speed on their SEO, it happens. So they said, let's see what happens. So theoretically, um, if paid search and uh, organic were com combined, they should win each around 23%. That means when it's organic only, then organic should rise to about a 42 to 46% level of your total inbound site traffic, picking up the paid search that's missing. What we did see was when paid went off, organic did rise. It rose from 23% uh, to 36%. So net net, it was not able to compensate for the loss. Almost all that traffic was non-brand. So very important to note, high volume terms, applewood smoked bacon, uh, bacon steak, thick cut bacon, bacon bacon, no nitrate bacon, vegetarian bacon, which we keep trying to get rid of, but people keep trying to find it. Um, we lost all that traffic. So what we did see the rise was, was the rise um, from organic was largely compensating for the brand traffic, but it could not compensate for the um, non-brand traffic. So upon relaunching the Google search data, we, um, the data returned to near, near identical pre-organic breaks. So we did the same number of days, same days of the week, non-peak seasons, non-holiday shopping, nothing to drive to try and prove that, see the data in its normal day-to-day -day operational state to try and prove it out. And what we saw was the second paid search went back on, our traffic volume returned. Now organic did go back down, but it was compensated by paid search. We also saw an increase in our transactions, excuse me. So net net, they couldn't survive without paid search. So that's the basic one for you. Uh, here's a pretty chart, because I was told people like visuals. So there. Um, Left column on each one is pre-shut off, middle one is shut off, um, far right column on each graph is after it went back live, same number of days. We're looking at visits versus sales, how much is being made up by organic. So the, very, the graph on the right, middle column, you'll see that near all sales went to organic. We did actually get a few um, coming in on paid search that were late in orders, so we just couldn't filter that out but then you see just returning to a similar level right after we go back live. Make sense so far? Good. So let's go to another brand. This is a client there, Automotive Accessories. This is after, not aftermarket, it's necessities, brake pads, tires, um, necessary parts. Not like I'm gonna go get a spoiler on my car and devalue it because I apparently don't know how to manage money kind of aftermarket. So this was a plan test. We actually had to do this three times. Um, one thing that we learned about the automotive industry is stimulus checks. Whenever they come out in 2020, was it 2020 and 2021, every time stimulus check came out, it skewed our data because people would go spend it on car repairs. But we had no idea, we weren't expecting that, and that's what happened. We should have known that when we were seeing tax return time, but live and learn. So this has been a planned test for a number of times. We were focusing specifically on brand traffic. This is a scenario where we were debating, we have really good organic rankings for brand. Uh, we're one through like 25, so it's a non-concern. But the question is, should we still be paying for brand? I have my opinion and client has theirs, so we did the study. We actually ended up having to do the study three different times. So finally, the third time we were able to get around um, the stimulus checks causing the jack up in traffic. So the Google entities, and get Google Yex is their uh, Google business listings. It's just ta tagged as Google Yex. Couldn't tell you why exactly. Um, and right now, they're making about 70% of our business and about 73% of quotes. Quotes is uh, getting a quote for your parts um, to have them do the installation in person. So during the test, the number of visits and quotes contributed as a percentage total were lower than the relatively same amount during the pre-test period. So we did see a decline in our sessions and a noticeable decline in our quotes. So one first thing you think is, all right, John, you and Cardi B who are like this at this point were absolutely right. And then brand traffic was so heavy of a loss you can't survive without the brand. So normally I'd say, yeah, absolutely. I was right. Take that, my wife. I was right, um, which makes it better. Um, now here's the other thing though, is when we went back live, we had a slightly unexpected scenario. Sessions went back up, but we did not see them return to the same level as the pre-test scenario. Why? Honestly, a gust of wind could have been a reason why, but we saw a flat number of tire quotes, but we saw an uptick in sessions. 
Now, we also play a long game on this on a lifetime value. So once you've come to our site once, we know we're going to get more money out of you in the long term. So we weren't terribly upset at that. But it did prove, once again, on a higher volume account that after only two weeks, you still need brand search nonetheless. Uh, then ended up being a very interesting net outcome. We laid it out to the client. They were intrigued by it. We ended up doing a method that I still don't necessarily agree with, but to each their own, where now we only serve um, our brand ads to people that are in market and have never visited our website or had a transaction on our website before. So if it's the first time you've ever seen our ad before, if you've never been to my site before and you've never transacted on my site, we'll show you the ad. Somehow you've seen our billboards, you've seen our TV commercials, you've seen our NHL sponsorship. That drove you to your site. So the second you interact with it, we've put you into a remarketing tag as an exclusionary point. We won't pay for you to come search our brand name again because we know that you'll come back and we have a good CRM system. Everyone here have a good CRM system? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, well, these little slight head nods while they're cute in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, I need to say yes and raise your hands. There we go. Good. I can't tell you how, much, how angry it gets you when I don't hear people having good CRM systems. So net net, um, this was actually poor editing on my part. This slide should not have been there. There we go. So now we go to the most recent one. This client has been a client of mine for years. They operate a chain of senior living facilities. There's literally hundreds across the country, but they only want to focus on one in north central New Hampshire. Um, anyone been to Littleton, New Hampshire? Exactly. Uh, there's about 12 people there. Uh, no offense if you're originally from New Hampshire, but honestly, there's 12 people. So he said, you know what, I have no competition because A, we're the only shop in town for a 15 square mile radius at least, and our organic rankings are great, blatant lie on his part, um, I don't need to run search, I don't need to run paid search, so let's just do it. Let's get rid of SDM. We're only running Google because it's small, just specifically for this one community. We have to call them communities, not assisted living or uh, old folks homes, apparently they don't like that. So he said, all right, well, let's just make up a name that's actually his name called Rob. Uh, all right, Rob, this is what we'll do. We'll pause it, but the ramifications are you're going to lose this traffic, you're going to lose these leads because paid search is accounting for the majority of everything. And his response was, I will fight you. And I turned around and said, no, but let's still run the study and see what happens. Rob is a good guy, plays rugby, hit in the head a few times. It happens. So we ran this. We originally, because it's a low volume account, we had anticipated on running this for a month to get statistical significance because it's a very, very low volume community and our geotargeting is set to about a 15 square mile radius around the community because people aren't typically willing to drive further than that for their loved ones. It's face the facts. Your kids will put you in a home, but it'll be within 15 miles of them. So we ran it. Once again, we were planning four weeks. Day number 10. John, what happened? Well, Rob, your organic traffic went up 38%. Great. But because it did not go up by 365%, you were at a net loss in traffic, pure, plain and simple. I don't want to say I told you so, Rob, but this brings me great joy and pleasure to say that. Um, then he threatened to cut our contracts. I that's Rob. Um, and I said, look, Rob, we can continue to do this. We don't have statistical significance, but I know you're losing your leads every day. Let us do it. Right at this point, we had about a 15% lead rate. So when you have low volume, it's pretty good. And for those that are interested, a completed lead in a senior living facility um, typically leads to about a lifetime value of around $70,000 for that uh, facility. So one lead is really good. One lead will pay um, about 75% of all operating expenses for a month. Uh, during this 10 day period, they got zero. We usually get between five and six a day. So that's money out the door. So we exchanged commentary on that one and net net, we turned this test off. The only reason I don't have post study data on this one is because we changed this two days ago. Um, told you so, Rob. So in all three scenarios, it is evident and if it's not evident to you, that means you were probably looking at your phone the whole time and not paying attention to any of my funny jokes. Um, in all three scenarios, it is evident that when dropping that, that single source or reduced source in the scenario where you only pause brand or non-brand of traffic, the organic struggles to deliver the same amount of inbound traffic when both are present at once. Once again, does anyone remember why that is the case? 
I heard someone say something. Okay, oh, I will reiterate it one more time. Consumer sentiment and trust. When you are visible as humanly possible in a search results page, whether it's paid and organic combined, you instill a higher degree of trust, which means you're more likely to get led into a, or more likely to get that CTR to your website through one way or another, which is one of the reasons why we always have to look at search as holistic, not just organic and paid combined. Make sense so far? Good. So let's talk about how to understand and how to measure and test this on your own. Once again, I am no way, shape or form advocate for turning off paid search when you're running, when you're focusing on search based traffic. But I also believe that uh, if you're gonna learn that stove is hot, you probably have to touch it once. Anyone else got that sense of parenting? No, okay, good. You're raised better than I was. So there's roughly about two different versions of this one. There's a simplistic approach and a more detailed approach. And honestly, it's number three on this is the re what really changes it up. So the simplistic approach, this is something that anyone here can do providing they have um, Google Analytics or there's a few other analytics out there. Adobe has a good one. Keep is another good one. I almost kicked that over um, to be able to do this. And this is understanding purely um, what your current paid search and your current organic search production is combined. And when I say production, I mean visits to the site and users. You can also look at a post-click engagement activity as well simultaneously. Pause the SEM, part of it or all of it. I am not big on pausing when you're doing these tests to pause at all. I would say pick your brand or your non-brand. Hmm? Wow. Pick your brand or your non-brand, up to you. If you wanna do both and go gung-ho, you can accelerate the study itself, but you're gonna do it and you're gonna do it for about one to three weeks. You can go a little bit longer. Those that have shorter vol traffic volumes to their site normally are lower demand. You can go probably up to four to six weeks. Anything over six weeks, you would run into other scenarios where you've lost quality score for when you do reactivation. Everybody here familiar with quality score? Okay, I'm just, enough people said yes. Uh, yeah, the quality score is they used to reset at two weeks, now it's about three weeks. Um, this will be negative for the um, smaller accounts that have to run this for a longer period of time. Track the organic and paid production during the pause, before the pause, after the pause. This is where you're gonna see, you're gonna look at total percent of contributed traffic to the site, total traffic contributed by each one of these, total traffic of them separated and combined. Start understanding all the volume that you would normally see to it and see that when paid is offline, will organic be able to compensate? Reactivate paid search or SEM. Go back to the normal operations and you're gonna go back and run this for the same amount of time you were offline for before you go and do your study. Big key that I cannot stress enough is when you do these types of tests, do not do them during peak seasons because that will ruin your business and get you fired. Do not do this um, if you have known seasonality that's coming up or you're running sales or deals. So one, let's go back to our automotive accessory. The first time we ran it, we were actually did it when a sale was about to come. Uh, the second time was during the stimulus check. We should have known that it was going to have an impact. We weren't anticipating it. Don't do it during this because it's going to actually have very negative effects from a holistic standpoint on your business as a whole. And then make sure you run it for the same amount of time so you can look back, yada, yada, yada. Compare pre, in, and post data to show that there's a difference between the traffic and the KPIs. If in the event you're able to survive and still have the same level of production, awesome, good for you. You've learned now Amazon, Geico, or eBay, but I highly doubt that's gonna be the case for you. So let's talk about the slightly more detailed version. Step one is the same. Step two, still the same. Now step three is where we get a little bit more convoluted here. Um, this goes back to my demand that each and every one of you here should have Google Search Console on your website, especially if you have Google Analytics. You can link them together, it is a glorious thing. In fact, it's actually necessary to do this. This is where you start looking at specifically terminology. So start looking at your inbound traffic. We're gonna call, because I'm not allowed to say the brand names anymore because I keep getting in trouble for that. Uh, look at brand X, brand traffic through Google Search Console. It's one of the great things you can see in that is it does give you queries of organic traffic a la 2009 when GA used to be able to do it and they got rid of that because Google didn't want us to know too much. Start looking at that by individual keyword levels. Look at it, the production from the paid search side. When the paid search goes off, go examine the data in Search Console to see if the organic traffic for that word rises or not. That is one of the most detailed um, ways to look at this. Um, problem is Search Console is not as good on lower volume traffic, so it's not 100%. 
So brand traffic, if you have a well-known or decent brand or you're an industry leader, it's a better way to do this measurement. But you will scour that and you'll do it. Reactivate SEM, same as last before, and then compare it in the pre and post data. I apologize, I wasn't expecting the screens to be off that wide or that small print text, but I assure you that some cute little data right there doing a pre and post scenario. It's fairly straightforward. There is two ways to look at the measurement. You can do a, your standard pre, in, and post study, looking at the three time frames. What we do with that, and does anyone here have a data science team or it works in data science? One, okay, it's not uncommon, so I understand that. Uh, one other thing, way to look at this is we also look at year over year anticipated data. So what, rather than doing just the pre, post, and in data, what we do is we take two to three years of historical data over the same time frames, the same days of the week, the same durations, and start looking at what the anticipated traffic demand is going to be. Granted, the pandemic has thrown a lot of things through the loop, but we will try and do expected traffic and actualized traffic to see if there's a commonality between them. So the takeaway, and this is the part where I try and think of one last funny joke for you all, and then I hop off stage. Yes, the concept of SEM plus SEO is equal to that of one plus one equals three, because I get that question enough of which one is it. Um, and then I ask that person to walk away from me because they were clearly not paying attention. Very few brands, I, I can't, I don't know if I've stressed this enough. Unless your name is Amazon, Geico, or eBay, you probably won't be able to successfully survive without it. In recent years, and this is the interesting one, so, similar to this, a number of large brands who I shouldn't say, but will, Reddit, um, and 1-800-CONTACTS have filed lawsuits trying to force competition um, to stop bidding on their terms so that they don't have to bid on their terms because they think they can survive. In other scenarios, they've tried to go sue Google saying, no one should be allowed to bid on my own terms, especially my brand traffic, um, to try and stop it. And you know what? That may be the case, but you know what? When you start going that route, besides a whole other degree of legalities, you're still gonna cut yourself off. It's not worth it, especially not to put lawyer fees around. And at least one person in this room is gonna say, I'm gonna go sue them. Please don't. Um, and while I don't advocate for turning off paid search I, and going organic only, once again, touch the soap, see if it's hot. You'll learn your lesson real fast. And to wrap it up, thank you for sitting here. I originally thought I was the last speaker, which is why it says go home. Please don't go home. Uh, Karen is speaking after me, and she'll be delightful. Um, if you love this, hate this, hate this, uh, really just want to curse me out, I recommend doing it on Twitter. I'm less responsive on emails, but Twitter, I, you can just mouth off to me left and right. Please follow my chickens um, feed. And you know, other questions, otherwise, email me. And that's me. So, questions? Oh, are you there? That, I'm sorry, that just makes me so nervous. <laughs> me too, maybe super nervous. Um, I think I have a twofold question. Um, so the first part, and I think you already went over this, is if one plus one equals three, then why isn't nine rooftops um, bidding on their brand name? We are, but we only do in select markets. Per okay, select markets. Were you also kind of talking about um, creating a new custom segment within your audiences in Google Ads and then filtering by people who searched by your brand name and then throwing them into remarketing? Well, not so much that have searched by our brand name, uh, but have engaged with our site. So, and this is very common with retailers where if people come in on our brand name, they know the brand name. Now, whether or not they engage with the site or they just want it done because they saw the commercials is another thing. So what we do is we build remarketing lists based off those who visit our site, those who have engaged with our site, and those who have visited our site and abandoned not taking any action. The ones that have not taken any action, and this goes across almost all my clients, we will remarket the living daylights out of you, providing the website you visit is brand safe, or we can hunt you down through Gmail, yada, yada, yada. And we'll, that's when we start giving you incentivized ads. We give you a custom landing page to try and encourage you to come back to do this, and we'll just make it sweeter and sweeter and sweeter the longer time you're out. Kind of that. Perfect. And Second part of the question, because I also work for an agency. Did you develop that strategy because at first you weren't segmenting your audiences and you just learned that it was better to be more personalized? Yeah, we've had enough. As I want to say yes, but also no time. Um, we discovered that there's more and more fears about GDPR and CCPA 
and lack of first party data, we had to find ways to try and shorten our conversion window. Mm -hmm. So some of my clients have a six week conversion window, some of them have a 60 second conversion window. We wanted to do everything we could to try and reduce it down to seven days because that's really what GDPR and CCPA really are. So we started focusing on that and started hunting people with the second they left the site and didn't, didn't buy, but did um, engage with the site. We started doing that instantaneously, just start doing it. And we would give it obviously the incentivization of, hey, come to our website, give us, get 5% off if you give us your email. That way I have that data long-term. Okay, awesome, thank you. No problem. Other questions? One other? Please don't throw that. Thank you. About a year ago, this is fun. About a year ago um, on Chrome browsers, we noticed that like, we we bid top of page on our own term. We have competitors that bid on our term. We rank number one organic. Suddenly, our paid search um, in Google went up probably about fifty to sixty percent. And we it was a mystery for about three months. But then I realized that with the Chrome browser, when you type in our name. It used to fill it out medjet.com and it would default you to our website. Now it fills out medjet.com and the Chrome browser defaults you to the SERP result page. Mm -hmm. So people don't go, even though they know where they're going, they're not going to our website anymore. They're going to search and because we've been top of page, they're clicking on the ad, which I'm getting charged for. Yep. That's not, I'm, you're shaking your head. That's not. No, 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 that we, we saw that. It's like it was so shady. We, when we finally figured it out, I was like, that is so shady. <laughs> so what's more surprising is you only saw it about a year ago. We started seeing this when Google started rolling out the autocomplete. Who remembers when Google wouldn't try and tell you what you were trying to search for and it just left the line, line blank until you finished populating it? I miss those days. That yeah. was probably about 2015, I think, that started, give or take. Um, we saw that exact scenario transpire. We saw a few years back. Why it's happening to you now, I honestly couldn't tell you on that one, but it is, Google's gonna Google and Google, no one in life wins if Google doesn't win first, and that's how they're gonna win. Yeah, it's like it, it, it defaulting to search so that it pushes more traffic through your ad mm -hmm. versus to your website, even though that's, you already have done the brand, you've done the work, that's where people are heading. Well, the, the other part to that is it artificially inflates your CTR which has a pro and a con. The con is it charges you money. The pro though is um, it helps scale up your quality score because the expected CTR is gonna rise. So there is a pro and a con to it. So you might actually see a decline in the CPC, but you're still gonna be paying a chunk of change because you were getting this paid traffic before. We see the exact same thing with Bing starting about three years ago or four years ago probably when they integrated into Windows 10. So you start doing your desktop search for this and then it pulls up the Bing result and then you're what you hopefully want on your desktop ends up being an ad that you end up clicking on kind of thing. No way around it. Not really. <laughs> Sorry, you got a question? Hey, can she get a cube that you don't throw? Throw it. <laughs> okay. Um, my question is about the uh, psychological effect for the uh, one plus one equals three. Uh, is it for the, uh, is it for like a, a confirmation effect that's behind it that uh, Google uh, affirms you, that your website is suitable for that search twice, that people are more likely to trust your brand. More or less, it's basically saying, I don't, I don't know if it's more of a confirmation, but what, you're more likely to engage with what you see more of. That's the nature of the business. It's one of the reasons why, um, like Mars Candy advertises on TV, in print, at the gas station when you're pumping it, and then you'll see the billboards inside as well. Whatever you see more of, you're more likely to do it. Is it a confirmation? Yeah, maybe not so much a confirmation as more as a confidence boost for the consumer, or they're just, I hate to say it, lazy, and they'll click on whatever's most prevalent. I mean, that's me. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No, one, one more. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I work for an exchange and incrementality comes up a lot. Um, so I noticed in those examples that you showed, like the senior living, the banking company, those clients, do they actively ask you to pause because they want to prove out incrementality? 
or has there any been any instance where you were like proactively the one to say, hey, we're, we're dropping a lot of value for you. Let's do like some type of lift test to show that, you know, SCM is a really good source and mm -hmm. maybe invest more resources here. And maybe they don't realize that until it's gone. So is that something, is that an approach you ever took? Uh, it is. We, the bacon one was actually purely by accident because their credit card got stolen. Um, the automotive accessories, they actually approached us. We have approached it a few times trying to prove out the incremental value and say like, the problem is when you, especially on search, because it's such a high ROI and ROAS driver, we'll approach, I try and approach each client once a year, especially if I have a new client coming in that's taking over, say, we just want to show you the value. We already know the answer, but we want to show you the value. The problem is how do you go to your brand or your client and say, I want to turn off your number one or number two revenue and ROI performer for a few weeks and see what happens. So we have approached, um, we lay out the pros and cons of the scenario, and the, usually the pro is we can prove out the value of this to you, or maybe we learn something new and you go back to CMO and look special. But here's also the cons or the potential impact. So the savvier clients will typically say no to it because they're all about ROI and revenue. The more inquisitive newer ones are like, sure, we'll see what happens, then we'll lay out the pros and cons, and about a quarter of them might say yes after that. So what are you looking at? You're looking at the campaign from like, I don't know, like a CTR perspective to give you the confidence to make that step because I mean, when you run the test, I'm sure you want to be favorable and actually prove out that SCM is a good source. Yeah, it typically varies from client to client what it is. Um, basically look at CTR, holistic traffic to the site, on a spe specifically on queries that we can uh, do it for brand, non-brand or service specific terms, and then on-site engagement. Um, whether it's a lead, a sale, transaction, page depth, Bounce rate, something to that degree. Something I want something front end metric, and I want something on site. Any other questions? No, I got eleven seconds left. So, thank you, everybody. <laughs>